essentially it appears it's a perennial issue. So why don't we look for a permanent solution? And that is broadly. And Your Excellency, there are many ways we can do it together with the government, private sector. <coughs> we did it during the COVID. And essentially, now the country is resilient and can produce PPEs if such a shock comes again. So it, it's inbuilt systems. And we have an equity group and my family on a matching grant through the Equity Group Foundation who put forward $1 million, $120 million. We are very much looking forward to um, the government consultations in early December to look uh, in the more resilient ways of agriculture because this is, I think, the main challenge to look for um, polit political answers for the structural uh, transformations in these regions because, as um, Stephen said, uh, it's not about only this crisis, but it's about the longer-term challenges that we have to face. And I think I can tell you that Germany and Europe is on your side in this. Thank you. Our Minister for Overseas Development and Diaspora came to the Horn of Africa and came to Kenya in particular to see the situation for himself. So in, in Nairobi, Minister Brophy, he met with the national government, he met with the NDMA, he met with partners, but crucially, he traveled to Turkana, where he visited four different communities who were benefiting from Irish support. He sat under many trees with elders, with women, um, with pastoralists, and he heard about the devastating loss of life, their fears for their children, their fears for their futures. And he took that message back to Dublin. And I'm very proud to say that our government passed a supplementary budget allocating an additional 30 million this year for the crisis in the Horn of Africa. Um, and that's on top of 75 million that was already allocated. But I think there is a really deep recognition that there's a very narrow window in which to respond. And we are determined to be part of that response and to support our friends in Kenya at this moment. Serbia is not a G7 country. We are unfortunately even not a G20 country. But we are an old friend of Kenya. We, we have been here since 1963 with you. And we want to help as much as we can. We are fully aware of the situation, which is a difficult one. Last week, the government of Serbia donated medicine and food to Somalia. And I will be asking my government to give a very significant contribution to Kenya. Uh, our company in 1985 built the Kiambera Dam. I will be talking to the directors of that company because I know that you're going to build new dams. We are maize exporters, so we can be helpful on that score. And we think that there are many, many things that we can do together. So we will be getting a donation, a significant donation from Serbia very, very soon. We know that the situation um, requires short-term interventions to save lives, but we also uh, are willing to work with you on the more medium-term and long-term uh, adaptation and resilience to a situation that unfortunately we believe will continue to be dire and which means that we need to find alternative ways to, um, to handle that for the, for the population um, uh, that are resident in those counties. I sit on the board of an organization called the Nature Conservancy. It's one of the largest conservancies in the world. They operate in about 73 countries. And they've been trying to set up, a, a, they call it project fund for, project finance for permanence, which are funds that are targeted to creating permanent funding solutions where the return is a recurrent fund that is used for conservation and climate resilience efforts in different countries. And they've been trying to set up in Kenya for a while because they require senior level uh, political support. The target for Kenya is $150 million, the fund they're looking to establishing with Kenya. And before I came for this meeting, they asked me to engage and share with them. Uh, they were seeking your support to establish this particular fund for Kenya. I think it would be in place in about 18 to 24 months. If you assume a return of about 13 to 14 percent, the funds that would be available annually would be about $20 million, and those are the funds that would then be available for recurrent uh, uh, investment. So that is, those are funds and an initiative that we can immediately uh, get started on. And the second idea I had is if we raised a Kenya International Climate Bond as a country, 
we may be in a position to raise funds quickly that can go towards permanent solutions around the dams and afforestation uh, programs and then pay slowly through the interest programs. And of course, with increased productivity, we should be able to meet that particular cost. And these are funds we can raise internationally. I want to be grateful on behalf of the government of Kenya for you stepping forward as uh, members of our society so that we can share in this uh, burden uh, together. To thank the media and all the other stakeholders for their contribution in all ways to raise the profile of the situation that is facing our country and for consolidating our response uh, to this uh, situation. We are uh, in a very uh, precarious uh, position. 20 counties are affected. Even the non-traditional ASAL uh, counties are also affected. We've all the way to 4.3 million people uh, in Asal and in other parts of the country affected by this drought. We, um, we are facing the fourth consecutive year of rain failure and crop failure. And as a result, we have a huge population of our country who do not have food. We have lost, as uh, has been said here, about two and a half million heads of livestock and so much wildlife as well. Um, if you just quantify the livestock, we are talking about $1.5 billion in losses. And if you look at the communities where these losses have occurred, they are already very distressed communities. So losing $1.5 billion by already very um, poor people really puts them in a very, in a very, in a very dangerous spot. Yeah. Close to um, a million children are, are, are in distress with malnutrition, many of them are marking absent in school. We have close to 140,000 mothers, pregnant mothers, lactating mothers, also suffering malnutrition. So we, we really have a situation uh, in our hands. We have also uh, undertaken that as an administration, we are going to change uh, the Kazi Mutaani uh, program to use the same people and the resources we have in that space to green our cities and to grow trees around Kenya. They will be part of the big army we are going to build so that at the end of the day, uh, we don't end up with work that was done that has no trace or record. We've been on Kasi Kwavijana for a long time, but there is nothing to show for it. We want this time round, at least for those who are involved in Kasi uh, Kazim Taani, we want them to say that we planted these trees, we greened this place, we changed the uh, environment of our city, we changed the environment of our village, we changed the situation in our water catchment areas, in our um, national parks, in our um, forests, and, and, and all that. So again, we, I know uh, some development partners have stepped forward to work with us under the Tree Growing Fund, and uh, I look forward again to us working together in that space. Even in this situation, I think we still need to plan positively ahead and apart from this appeal which we, we, we believe will help us with the intervention that we need as of immediate, I think in the short term we are going to provide resources also as government of Kenya to support our farmers so that whenever we get rain, the little we get, we must use it to produce. 
part of the challenge we had is that for the last three years, uh, we didn't bring sufficient support under the program we, already, we always had to support the production. But this year, we have uh, already worked with the different teams and different groups to assess our requirements, even in the context of the challenges we have of fertilizer supply. Um, we are working with suppliers so that the intervention we have made, which we, we made immediately, I came into office of the first uh, 1.4 million bags of fertilizer to support our farmers to produce. We're going to provide in the coming uh, month for the, um, uh, for the planting season in March and April. We're going to provide 6 million bags of fertilizer. We have factored in about 10 billion shillings to carry that through. We, are also, uh, we have also provided a facility of 15 billion shillings to support the importation of between five and 10 million bags of maize and other assorted foodstuffs just to support the gap that we have already seen in our production. This year, our analysis is that we have produced 10 million less bags of maize, and we need to close that gap with imports. So already, we are working with suppliers. We have already made the necessary arrangements to make sure that duties and taxes are waived so that we can bring food into the country by December. We are flexible. I think the most efficient way of targeting support is through cash transfer. We are fully in support of uh, that instrument. We also think that there are occasions where even with money, there is no food to buy. So sometimes it's also good to also make food available in uh, these uh, uh, drought-stricken uh, areas. And that's why we are working on a combination of cash transfer and actual food supply to these uh, areas. And the coordination that has been provided under the office of the Deputy President to make sure that we are all working, synergized, not in cross purposes, so that we can get value out of the resources that is available to us, uh, I think has worked perfectly. And as he reports, at least 70% of the challenges that we have had are sorted out. We are working on the remaining portions so that we can make this response seamless, efficient, and effective. So, um, friends, I am taking this opportunity to request all of us to bend over backwards and see what we can do. Uh, maybe it, it is necessary for me to say that as a government of Kenya, we really have to um, plan ahead of time. I think our response to this situation, we could have done a lot better. And I want to promise that going into the future, we're going to be better prepared to deal with this challenge because all indications are that we are going to be in this space for a while. And therefore, uh, it's going to cease to be an emergency. It, it really must now become part of our budget-making process for us to be able to uh, undertake necessary responses uh, in light of the predictions that are there of depressed rains uh, in March, May, and we, we aren't sure of what will happen thereafter as we leave the reality of climate change.